Hello everyone and welcome to the first day of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover here at the Venetian in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my two co-hosts, co-analysts, co-founders of theCUBE, Dave Vellante and John Furrier. We are all fresh off the keynote with Antonio Neri, the first ever keynote in the sphere. It was pretty cool, I got to say. I mean, so I'd, <laughs> I'd awesome. love to hear your first impressions. Well, I mean, first of all, I mean, it was the first ever keynote in the history of the sphere, so it was historic in nature, HPE Discover. And we were there. We were there, and I got a lot of photos, I got a little video, um, so that was good to see. And I think it's a proud moment for Antonio Neri and HPE's entire team to do that. Um, now, there's a little inside baseball, Dave. When we were at GTC, which is NVIDIA's conference, yeah, it was well understood, it wasn't publicly talked about, but we found out from our sources that Jensen really wanted to do his keynote of GTC at the Sphere. They couldn't pull the logistics off, had to do the event in San Jose. So I don't know if you noticed, but there's a little bit of, this is my living room from Antonio Neri, and then he's like, nice living room. So there was a little bit of uh, inside baseball. If you go to a lot of events, you know that. It was fun to see his reaction, he's a good sport. Obviously, Jensen Wong was on stage from NVIDIA, uh, and those two uh, senior executives, both industry and engineers, obviously Jensen Wong more deeper on the tech side than Antonio, given that he's doing chips and GPUs. But it was a great moment, and, was, and I thought it was a fa fabulous keynote. What jumped out at me immediately was the sphere. It was an intense and entertaining visual show and a great experience. I got to say, I was mesmerized, I was blown away, um, I loved it. I think at one point the crowd was more in tune of the images and they had to say probably the best for last because everyone's just like going gaga over the images. It was really a fantastic event and I think the keynotes of the future will all be in the spheres. We've got a nice bridge from the Venetian here. So we saw witness history on that front. On HPE, I thought it was a kind of vanilla keynote up until the end when they got into the Jensen. They did all their, their thank their customers. They, they were pounding on their leadership in liquid cooling, um, but it was really the ceremonial announcements. Thank our partners, some great use cases, great demos and the videos. The normal canned videos jump out with the sphere, so obviously that, that was great. Um, but really I thought the highlight of the show was HP making a major change in their strategy by going to market with NVIDIA. Huge, bold move. I think that was Jensen's most time on stage of keynotes he's done. I, I clocked it out close to 25 minutes. Um, and he really hit home his talking points. We're in a paradigm shift, it's an industrial revolution. Tokens, uh, AI, clustered systems is the future. And every company wants to use generative AI, but they all need new infrastructure tool and tools to make it happen. We've been saying that on theCUBE, and this is what's happening. This is the in the era of solve that first problem, get the hardware right. Well, the venue was amazing. I had never been in the sphere, so it's a really immersive experience. The sound system, like beyond anything I've ever heard, and I got a little more inside baseball. I was talking to, to one of the execs at HP. It was done in 14K, the visuals. It was 14K, I thought, I thought 8K was. Yeah was impressive, but, <laughs> so that's, that's pretty astounding. Antonio said big moments require big venues, and so I think they nailed it from that standpoint. And um, you know, he said that everything before, he's, he invoked Bill and Dave. I was thinking yeah. about you when that happened, and I was like, everything before us was built for this moment, yeah. right? Yeah. And so he really sort of drew back on the history of HPE, the 80 plus year history of HPE. Um, and then a big announcement was the NVIDIA AI computing with HPE and basically Jensen going through his stacks. Uh, I thought that was, you know, as you say, the highlight. Uh, I thought, you know, Antonio, he started off really strong and then he kind of got into some of the customer stuff. I love the logo slide. Uh, yeah. The Sphere version of the logo slide was pretty amazing, but basically they had all the logos rolling. Bubbling up. Bubbling yeah. up yeah. in front of you. That Rebecca, was what was your um, feeling about the Sphere? Because you and I were talking before you came on camera. What was your reaction? It was. I, both of you are, are completely nailing my, my thoughts too, that the, that the sound was incredible, the visuals were incredible, but I also really came away with how much they were talking about the humanitarian power of AI. And really when you see the power of these potential medical breakthroughs and drug discoveries, and what it's going to mean for our natural world and renewable energy, I mean, I, th I thought it was a really aspirational message mm -hmm. that, that reminded us of, yeah, okay, we, are, we can still talk about HP, 
GPUs and things like that, but really, this is going to transform society. Well, and that's something that yeah. HPE is, or HP and then now HP have always been you know, serious about. You hear other vendors as well. Yeah. But I think these big, large tech vendors, John, they take this, you know, they, they, they obviously have to make their profits, but they take responsibility pretty seriously. I'll give you another quick stat. I was in early and hanging out with, with Jason Newton, who actually designs a lot of this stuff. It's kind of his vision coming through. And the place was empty. And, and I was like, are you worried that it's not going to fill up? He goes, no, I'm in comms with these guys. They know how it's going to happen. We, we know what the flow is going to be. They only started like five minutes late and the play, place was packed, right? Yeah. Where were you sitting? I was down on the left, um, second tier up, so I had good visuals. I could see the whole view and I turned around, I could see the upper deck was packed. It was, a, it was a great show. I think everyone will probably walk away there giving a double thumbs up for HPE. Uh, it's funny you mentioned HP because Jensen Wong, when he was on he actually said HP, he didn't say H HPE. Because that's what people know uh, in this industry. HP, Hewlett Packard, and company split into two, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Hewlett Packard Consumer, which is printers and, and, and peripherals. But HP and HP Enterprise's DNA is servers, Dave. They're a hardware company. And this is a, this is a renaissance. This is going to be, I think, a moment for HPE to actually go back and flex their core. And remember, we used to talk about the machine and the supercomputing DNA with Cray. HP has supercomputing in their DNA, and I think this is going to be a shot in the arm, I think, for HPE with NVIDIA specifically to essentially reset what a data center is and the AI factory trend that's happening. And again, Nothing happens with data without the infrastructure first, and we've been seeing the, the slowdown on AI value, mainly because enterprises don't, aren't, don't have the gear yet. And so we've been pointing that out on theCUBE for all the shows. Yeah, there's some developer innovation, but at the end of the day, it's going to require more compute horsepower GPU. So it's like that Star Trek line, Scotty, more power, right? This is what the data center is going to do. It's going to turn into the AI on-prem cloud data center. And it's funny, they're bringing back private cloud, Dave. So the word private cloud, Apple used the word private cloud, Antonio Neri's calling it the AI, um, HPE private AI cloud. And what they're saying is the data is your intellectual property. So private is the new thing, it's back. So hopefully it'll have more definition <laughs> than other private clouds, but I, I yeah. thought that, that HP is going to lean into this hard. It's clear that Antonio's betting the ranch on NVIDIA even though Intel's the headline sponsor as well, but NVIDIA clearly front and center, bringing that platform shift that Jensen's been talking about since GTC and for a long, long time. Tokens, this, this new layer of vectors, codify your enterprise into a digital realm. This is what's happening and AI thrives in that environment. It's a setup for AI. You can't do AI without setting up the infrastructure and without codifying it and getting that data protected and that proprietary data. So I want to come back to the HP private cloud AI, and he, and he did give some kind of frame of it. He said it's storage, it's servers, it's GreenLake as a service, it's all the networking, it's turnkey. So that's really HPE's value add. They're also, and you heard this on the earnings call um, earlier this month, they're doubling down on liquid cooling. Trying to make liquid cooling, you know, position th their expertise in liquid cooling as a differentiator now, Remember, they have all these supercomputers, and these supercomputers, like the mainframes of the past, they're all liquid cooled. Yeah. And so, you know, the, he's making the argument that they have differentiation there. You know, we'll see how important that is. I think it's important in the market. I, I don't know how much of a differentiation it is, but just some stats. The timing couldn't be better here, because HPE just announced its earnings, and HPE has been sort of lagging some of the other folks, like Dell and Supermicro, obviously, NVIDIA, and the big internet companies. They blew out their quarter. They beat their, they, they, they beat their revenue by about 400 million. They beat their free cash flow by around 600 million. Yeah. They raised guidance. They grew at a really nice like 18% clip. They got a big AI server backlog, multiple, multiple billions. Um, they're, they're growing their AI, ARR, yeah. and their whole as a service business. And the stock just jumped up like 22% just in the last 30 days. So they're, they're playing catch up to some of those other high flyers. And, so, and I think there's more to go because they're raising guidance. Yeah, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that what he said at the beginning too, bold announcements are coming. Um, and, and, that, and the bold announcement was basically, they're telling their customers, Antonio basically said to their customers, look it, we're going to go to market with NVIDIA. NVIDIA has been going to every single show saying we're going to be part of that. But here it's actually a substantive deal. It's a technology deal. It's a product packaging solution deal. They actually showed products. They actually were demonstrating and showing that up, up on stage. And two, NVIDIA 
maybe uh, customers are going to get that access. So if, uh, if HP's entire sales force and partners are trained with NVIDIA, you can expect to see HP turn up the heat on the go-to-market and saying, we are an AI company, AI will be everywhere. So that should boost their revenues big time because customers do have to transform. Um, they, have to, they have to convert to a to these tokens, these vectors, you got you to contextualize the data in order to get the, the benefits. And you're starting to see some, some, some solutions out there now with retrieval augmentation generation, which is like retrieval and search with vector databases. And then you're starting to see agents come on the scene. So with agents, that's now the beginning of what will be an AI-enabled enterprise. But again, you can't get there without the hardware. And then, you know, you, we just had Snowflake and Databricks, so we know it's coming after infrastructure. Yeah, a well, complete rehaul of the data layer. Agentic AI <laughs> is know. kind of the new buzzword now, and we heard about that at, at Databricks last week. The other thing I wanted to, there was a little bit of a, a squint through, I'm not really sure what he meant, he said, we're committed to Blackwell time to market. We will be the leading integrator in the most sustainable way. So that's interesting, right? Because all the big hyperscale guys with lots of money, they're going to get Blackwell. Blackwell, of course, is the, the chip that Jensen announced at GTC, yeah. which is not really shipping yet, uh, but it's coming soon. So everybody's like in a race to get that next chip. And Antonio talked about it's not just for training, it's also for inference. And the other thing I thought that was pretty useful is Jensen laid out his, everybody's got their version of the stack. And he said you got the, the LLM, the model the model layer stack, of the stack. Model stack. You got the data piece of the stack, and then you got the compute piece of the stack. And he's basically saying we do all three. We have products for all three. But also that every single layer of the stack is being completely yes. transformed. Yeah, and that's why, the, this yeah. is why HP has an opportunity here to lean in because they have infrastructure chops. By partnering with NVIDIA, they get a major partner that's going to bring them massive credibility in the enterprise. And, and again, it's a, also a big win for NVIDIA. Let's not count out Jensen. He's an arms dealer, Dave. You basically just said everybody wants what he's got. So he's been peddling GPUs. He's got the next generation systems, InfiniBand, Ethernet. He laid it all out. But here's what happens. Their model stack is their Kool-Aid. They're like, hell good. We are doing NIMS and NEMO. And so NVIDIA is going using the HPs of the world by cracking the enterprise equation. They're pushing their stack. So the model stack that Jess was talking about is their stack. So these microservices that are coming out, I mean, that's proprietary to NVIDIA. So, you know, you know, you know let's, let's chalk one up for NVIDIA here because they're saying if you go with HPE, you get the NVIDIA model stack. That to me could run the table and again, benefit to NVIDIA. So that's not yet proven, the, the NIMS aren't proven model yet, we'll see. Again, NVIDIA now has a partner with HP from a distribution and revenue standpoint. So again, just another notch on the belt for Jensen um, from, a, from thread, taking the CUDA software and the entire NVIDIA AI systems, these clustered systems, into a, a company that knows how to sell it and they know how to service customers. So I think the partnership's phenomenal, just like I think NVIDIA partnering with others as well too has been a great boom. And those guys will make a lot of money. And we will see. We've never seen a company this profitable. We've never seen a company, a hardware company, with these kind of gross margins, you know, nearly 80% gross margins. And to your point, they've got NIMS, they've got Nemo, they've got CUDA, these are all software components. And so you had Wintel in the 90s, the 80s and 90s, they were the dominant, you know, virtual monopoly. And it's almost as though NVIDIA is trying to do both. Having said that, the industry is looking for alternatives. Right, you got Intel doing its thing, you got AMD, you've got co yeah. companies like Grok uh, trying to be the, the inference engine, the high performance inference engine, so you have a lot of companies that are out there saying, hey, we want a piece of that margin. Uh, obviously, NVIDIA has the big lead right now. We'll see how sustainable, there's nowhere to go in market share except down. I mean, they have like 100% But that's not here. what theCUBE is predicting. They're, they're definitely, <laughs> they're gonna, no, no, we're, we're predicting a lot of growth, but there's no way they're, at they some point, at some point, like the dot com bubble, the hardware thing will pop. But Rebecca, I think you said it really great. The platform is changing every single layer of the stack. And I think when you look at what NVIDIA represents, it represents the AI revolution in technology. It's a platform shift. Jensen said it's one of the biggest creators of our time. I believe in that. But, but he even in, he keeps introducing tokens in this platform shift. But it's also a computational strength. Transformation. And it's also, you're seeing the word supercomputing being talked about, not in the niche of a supercomputing market, you bring supercomputers and humans together. And I think you look at some of the use cases they presented, biology breakthroughs in medicine, uh, sustainability with Earth, and using um, technology to predict uh, a more sustainable environment for the planet. That is, that's, that is the benefit of a human supercomputing interaction. These AI-driven solutions and supercomputing capabilities will drive more creativity. And I love the Einstein quote, creativity is where intellect, intellect has fun. And AI 
AI scales intellect, we know that, and again, content generation, helping humans do better productivity, and then obviously physics and AI simulation, they didn't get into that, I thought they would talk more about synthetic data and some, some digital twin action, but it, they didn't get there. I want to, I'm really curious to hear what you both make of, of Antonio Neri's message in, in, that he talked about a little bit in the beginning, where he talked around the tension around AI. And John, you were saying that, yeah. that companies don't have the, the, the infrastructure, don't have the hardware, but there is this temptation to go quickly with AI. Yeah. But don't go too fast, because there are cyber threats, as we know, mm -hmm. abounding. Um, we can no longer, we question everything we see and hear a lot because yeah. of AI and these super fakes. And so I think he was really speaking to this, this fear on the part of a lot of executives here yeah. of, I know I should be innovating, I know I should be moving quickly, and yet I also want to be very cautious. Do you remember the State Street interview we did two weeks ago? The gentleman who was like the CTO of State Street said, we have to move fast, but we can't break things. You know the old saying, move fast and break yeah. things. He said, we can't do that. I thought that was one of the strongest parts of Antonio's keynote where he said, AI is hard and it's full of risks. And he said, they've been working on this five point model framework. It's got to be, AI's got to be private, it's got to be human focused, it's got to be access for all, it's got to be responsible, it's got to be robust and tested in an ongoing way. Yeah. And so that framework, they puts a lot of thought into that. I think, uh, yeah. you know, HP Labs is, is a big part of making that real. We got uh, Kirk coming on later on. You, you're not, you're not, you think it's motherhood and apple pie or? Well, I mean, look, it's a dog whistle for all the corporate folks who are saying, hey, I want to make sure we're safe. And it's a legit argument. So, you know, I, I, buy, I buy the whole AI explainability. I think that's going to be a big cottage industry, lineage, and also data supply chain. You're going you're gonna to see a lot about, but, but I think Jensen's right, models will integrate each other. The model stack's relevant, but to me, the, the issues are, that Rebecca pointed out, is, is that there's massive demand for AI right now. And so you're seeing a lot of activity. The problems are, is that the, the security and privacy concerns are really squishy, and, it's, and no one really kind of gets that yet. It's, it's, and people won't move on that piece alone. So I think there'll be a stall in the market until that gets solved. And finally, the data estates of all the companies are screwed up, it's like old school data warehouses, so the data's not in a good spot. So again, that's the second wave that comes after the infrastructure burst. So I think AI is in a, in a op cautious optimism right now, mainly because you can't mess around with the privacy and security because if there's more surface area exposed, that's going to put everyone on a, whoa, I want to see no failures. And so with the LLMs and the consumer side, oh yeah, you know, hallucinations, well, that's going to get solved by good, a model stack. I think that Jensen's right on that. But ultimately, you're right. I mean, you got to take responsibility, you got to be inclusive, which he didn't really get into, but I think that's a big factor that no one's talking about is that the AI can't be representing one class of humans, okay? And that, so that's a whole nother discipline. And then there's also the, how do you configure AI? So I think we're going to open up a Pandora's box of a lot of cool, hard problems to solve uh, around the, the data side of it. Um, sovereignty, privacy, governance. Well, and, and AI is going to go to where the data is. I know it's a bromide, but it's true. And that creates really hard computer science problems for somebody yeah. who knows computer science because of latency and yeah. obviously how do you create that same experience. And HPE's making a bet there. It's a hard engineering well, problem. I mean, my prediction is, is that once you get the compute and the new level of compute and, and clustered systems with the horsepower, then you can start doing things and reset your data, re-prepare your data to process it differently. And I think what's coming out about the data show is that that's the big conversation. What has to be different to do massive scale of data processing? And then reinforce learning and the, the tools that come with AI. So I think you fix the compute problem first and you'll have more horsepower to apply to either privacy policies that are user personalized or managed better with AI. So I'm optimistic that that'll get solved. Well, we are going to have an exciting three days, the three of us together here at, at this table, unpacking all of the things that, that we're talking about here. So I'm really right. excited to be here with both of you. All right, great. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante and John Furrier. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.